Hey guys, what is up? I'm obviously in my kitchen. I am about to do the kind of video you ask me for all the time that I don't regularly do because I don't like making cooking videos, but I'm about to cook a dinner, largely a farm fresh dinner, pretty typical of the kind of thing that we eat around here. And I'm going to show you this process. First, we're gonna get this meat started and then we're actually gonna go outside and harvest uh, the, some of the other components that I need for this dinner. First things first, I have a chicken, about a five pound chicken. This is one that we raised here on our farm, uh, moving its yard around so that it got to eat grass, scratch after bugs, and have a happy little chicken life. And the method that I'm gonna use to cook this chicken is something that I've been doing for quite a while now. I learned about it in a cookbook that I read in my 20s, um, gosh, I guess I've been making chicken like this for about 12 or 13 years now, and it's called spatchcocking. If you've never heard this before, it's where you cut the backbone out of a chicken and lay it flat, and it cooks a lot faster. So it's essentially roasting, but quicker. Now, I have a pair of kitchen shears here. These are sharp. This is probably one of the tools that I use the most in cooking. And I'm just gonna run these down the side of this chicken to cut this backbone out. Now, I don't remove the backbone entirely when I do spatchcocking, but I like to leave it attached. All right, so if you ever like read in a book or watch something that tells you how to spatchcock a chicken, they will tell you to cut along both sides of the backbone and remove it. I actually don't do that. Um, because I know that I'm gonna use this carcass to make broth after I roast this chicken. And if I take this backbone out now, it won't be roasted. And I want as much of this roasted, of these bones roasted as possible because it's gonna add more flavor to my broth. So I always just leave the backbone attached on one side. And normally, and normally I would just do this step in the sink, but I'm gonna do it on the counter here so you guys can see. I'm actually gonna turn this sideways here. Just want to break that breastbone so this thing will lay flat and as you can see here I left that backbone attached on this side and it's not going to change how this cooks but once we're done taking the meat off of this and eating dinner and I put this whole bird in the stock pot I'll have that much more uh, goodness added into my broth my oven is preheated to 400 and I'm gonna start heating up this pan so this is a 14 inch lodge cast iron pan. I bought this pan when I first read this chicken recipe. And the cookbook I read this in, it's called Mad Hungry, Feeding Men and Boys. And I got that cookbook when I only had two boys to feed. Uh, but it has served me well over these years. And um, it's written by a lady named Lucinda Scala Quinn. And I, I love her recipes. She's really good. She, and I actually learned to cook out of that cookbook. In fact, I had to go grab it to show you guys this. This is the mark of a loved cookbook. This thing is stained. Uh, it's got water damage. It's got notes and dog ears. And it is falling apart. Uh, because I actually learned how to cook out of that cookbook, largely. And this recipe, super simple, but it like was, it was one of the instruments of me falling in love with food. Actually, the first time I cooked this, I'd been a vegetarian for a year, and I ended up cooking it again and tasting it because I thought about it so much. <laughs> all right, so salt all over the skin, a little on the heavy side with the salt, pepper. Kind of the same, go a little on the heavy side. I'm gonna melt some ghee in this pan, just a couple of spoons of that. Um, I think the original recipe calls for like butter and oil, but I usually just use ghee for most things like this, especially if I'm heating them up. And I want this to be pretty warm, it's over medium heat. My oven is preheated at this point. And I am also going to wash some potatoes and get those ready. I'll let this heat up just a little bit more. I don't want it like smoking terribly, but I do want to put this chicken down in here. I want the skin to get crisp. And so I need it to not steam. I want it to be hot whenever that skin hits this oil uh, so it doesn't steam it and that'll keep the skin soggy. Ready, so we'll go ahead and put it in. All right. 
I'm gonna put this breast side down. And this takes probably like four minutes if your pan is right. I just wanna get a good golden crisp on the breast of this bird. Kids had a little bit of a late lunch today and I'm actually gonna be making some other things. Uh, so I, I didn't go ahead and do two chickens. A lot of times I would just go ahead and roast a second chicken. I just don't think it's necessary. And so I had one thought and I'm probably just gonna make that for lunch tomorrow. You can do this dish in a 12 inch pan. It just works better in a 14 inch pan. It's just more spacious and it cooks more evenly, but I've done it in a 12 inch pan, especially if you're doing a smaller chicken. Now here I have like a casserole dish and I have two pounds of these little potatoes. I did buy these from the store. I'm probably about two weeks out for being able to harvest potatoes from our farm. And they'll be about this size in two weeks. And I won't harvest a ton at that stage because while these are delicious, it is a little bit wasteful. Because if I wait two or three more weeks, they're four times the size. And that same amount of garden space produces a lot more food. So I put these in this pan. And again here, I'm gonna do ghee on these potatoes. I don't have to like totally coat them, it'll melt and I'm gonna stir them a couple of times as they cook. Some smoked paprika. And this is like an herbed salt that I get from a local place um, called Squisito. And it has a bunch of herbs and rosemary, garlic, sage, black pepper, fresh herbs and sea salt. So I'll put that on there. These are gonna go in this 400 degree oven as well as the chicken and I'm gonna roast both of them. The chicken will take about 45 minutes. I'll temp it at that point, give it more time if it needs it. 45 minutes for roasting a whole chicken is really good. If you leave the backbone in and leave a hole, it takes quite a bit longer. And I usually roast the potatoes for about the same amount of time because I want them super soft. They kind of like burst in your mouth. Oh, I love little potatoes. It's getting smoky in here and I'm not turning my range hood on because you guys won't be able to hear me then. As soon as we're done in here and we go outside though, that's going on. All right. Okay, so now that this has color on the top, I'm gonna stick it in the oven. I'm gonna put a 45 minute timer on my phone and we're gonna go outside and pick some stuff. Oh, little kitties. Hey kitty kitty kitty. Hey kitty kitty. <laughs> They're so cute. We got our two little kittens. Jamie, when we first got him, he was so snuggly. And he still is, but he loves the boys and he loves Jeremiah. Like, he'll be laying with me and if Jeremiah comes and lays down, he gets up and goes and lays next to Jeremiah. But William Wallace is my little snuggle buddy and he's so funny. Like I love a cat that will lounge and William is totally a lounger. Like he'll lay all the way across you like arms forward and feet pointing back. And I'm like, oh my God, why are you so cute? All right, so we have officially hit the season of the bean and these trellises are covered with lovely tender snap beans. And though snap beans are pretty easy to pop the ends off of and blanch and freeze is my preferred method of preserving these. You can can them if you have a pressure canner, uh, but pressure canning takes longer and they lose a lot of their texture. They're kind of mushy afterwards. And I prefer green beans that still have kind of a, a crunch to them. Now I will eat mushy green beans. I actually really like green beans and I don't know, canned green beans, kind of like the taste of my childhood. I, I will eat mushy green beans. Nobody else in my house will. So uh, preferably eating them fresh or blanching and freezing. But to me, there's nothing like eating them fresh. Got my handy roux apron here. This is one of my favorite jobs to use the roux apron for because I can just drop them in here as I pick and not have to hold on anything. So the purple potted pole beans I have here, um, they are producing quite a bit. I probably, it's hard to see down in there. Um, you know, a couple handfuls. I might have, I thought there were more out here. I might have to change plans a little bit. Oh no, there's more on this side. Picking green beans is kind of a pain in the butt when they blend in with the foliage. But um, the purple ones stand out, so I like them, and then like streaky ones. 
Uh, so right here I have this purple potted and rattlesnake. And the purple potted have a lot on them, but the rattlesnake are just setting their blossoms. So that's something to note. And they came up at the same time. These actually volunteered from last year. Even though the rattlesnake beans seem to be getting started a little bit later, they are supposed to be really good for hot weather. So it's not surprising that they are a little bit slower that they're waiting on the heat to really start cranking them out because a lot of times that's how stuff that likes the hot weather is i mean it just likes the hot weather so while it survives better in hot weather it also doesn't produce produce as well until it is hot all right i thought i had more beans down here i have probably two pretty good sized handfuls would be plenty for a smaller family one of my first hard lessons in the garden was learning that you have to plant a lot of beans if you're going to be consistently eating them fresh if you have a big family. So in a week, I will not be lacking at all being able to make meals. I mean, there's a whole bunch of really small ones on here. I've found that like 16 feet of pole beans, once they get going, is enough for us to come out and pick a meal's worth. For bush beans, because you pick them pretty much like pole beans will keep producing more bush beans you you know you'll get a few good harvests off of them but for bush beans i like to do like 32 feet to be able to pick enough to really preserve a lot at once but um still a little early that's okay i'm gonna grab a couple of onions and i'm gonna saute some onions in with these beans to just make it more substantial let's try to grab the bigger ones here all right so as not to just completely fill my apron up with dirt we're gonna go ahead and pull the outer layer off of these right down here so if you want to store onions you need to cure them uh, so all of these outer layers that are really wet right now will get good and papery same thing with garlic or anything like that but you can always pick them and just take them inside and use them also onion greens you can use those too um, sometimes you'll see me take things like that that I know I mean you can you can uh, dice these up. These are probably a little tough, but you can dehydrate these and make a powder. Um, sometimes I'll just throw stuff like that to my animals, especially whenever, I mean, I'm cooking dinner. I don't really have a whole lot of time. Um, if I didn't have so many small kids and I wasn't making YouTube videos six, seven times a week, I would probably waste less of things like that. There was a time that I used them more than I do now, but feeding them to the animals is also not waste when I give those to my animals, they're getting the benefit of onions, which are, they're good for your immune system. Eating anything like that. We'll take these back here. And I gotta grab a couple heads of this elephant garlic. So I pulled one up the other day. It was massive. And hey Pierre, you wanna come with me? Come on, let's go. So the elephant garlic was massive. It was one of the bigger ones, but it had rained a whole lot. So I've been trying to let it dry out for that same reason, because the husk of it, which I want to dry out for storage, it's gonna be real wet pulling it out of the mud. Um, it's supposed to start raining again, I think tomorrow evening. So I'm gonna try to harvest those tomorrow morning. Oh, look, look, hello little darling. Look, it's my first sunflower. Well, that is delightful. Hello birds. Hello birds. There you go. I make a dipping oil with this chicken. There's an airplane flying over. I make a dipping oil with this chicken that has crushed garlic cloves in it. And I would typically use like a regular garlic. And I'm gonna use these elephant garlic. So elephant garlic's not real garlic. It's an allium. I had someone tell me the other day it's actually a leek, which I thought was interesting. I didn't know that. Might change the flavor a little bit, but it'll still work. And I need to, you know, be using these and I need to be harvesting them. All right. Great. All right, so normally you would not dig your garlic out so thoroughly, but sweet Benjamin helped me with these. They're a little on the deep side. All right. Guess what I do not need to do? Get carried away and harvest a whole bunch of these. This is enough for dinner. I'm gonna stop. I only really need a few cloves. <laughs> this is why we eat dinner later than I would like. Because <laughs> when I should be inside cooking, I'm usually out here with my hands in the dirt. It's just so hot in the day. <laughs> At night, it's so nice and the light's so pretty. 
<laughs> always think, like, you know how you always have a list of things like that maybe you wish you did better? Like getting dinner on the table at a reasonable time is something that I really wish I was better at. And I think maybe someday I'll do that, but I don't know, because I think I'll always have a go. This dipping oil makes this chicken so good, and it's really good on pretty much anything, uh, like salad or any sort of meat. But what I'm gonna do is I think the ratio is about two thirds olive oil and like a third lemon juice, but just taste it, because it really depends on the oil you use, because some of them are a lot brighter, and, uh, you don't want to be too bright. It can be if it's a real bright olive oil, if it's not as robust. So I don't measure anything. This is all round about and then I'm going to taste it, but I'm squeezing. I'm going to start with one lemon and I'll do two if I need another one. One's usually enough, especially just for one chicken. I could do this in a probably less messy way. <laughs> not have to pick the seeds out with your hands, but inevitably when I'm ready cooking videos, somebody will be like, Watching you touch that with your hands is making me not want to eat this. And I'm like, you weren't invited to, so it's okay. My sons, which I birthed and breastfed for a year, they're not complaining about the fact that my hand was in it. Oil and lemon juice in this bowl. Now I gotta show you this trick. All right, so I'm gonna take these garlic cloves. This is probably gonna be fairly easy since these are so fresh. <laughs> these are huge. Okay, I'm gonna cut it in half first before I crush it. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna crush some of these and put them in here. I'm gonna taste this as I go so I don't actually put way too much on here because I'm not used to using elephant garlic. What you doing, buddy? I wanna be in the video. You wanna be in the video? Yeah. Well, go get a fork and you can come help me. Uh, I gotta get a spoon First thing, first, get my stool. My feet are like metal. Okay, so I want you to very carefully, don't knock it into the sink, please. Carefully stir that up. But these feel like chunks. They are chunks. They're not going to go away. You're just mixing up the oil and the lemon juice. And the more you mix, the more that's going to emulsify. A fork is a weird object. A fork is a weird object? Mm hmm interesting to mix to mix yeah. watch this watch this do like this cool. and do you see how that's kind of looking good. creamier yeah. that's because it's emulsifying because that lemon juice is acid in that oil and mixing them together is called an emulsion it looks like slime when i do this why are you smashing them why am I smashing them? To release flavor. All right, a little bit of salt and crushed red pepper. Not a lot of time. Crushed red pepper. Okay, let's taste it. It's sour. So this is supposed to be really bright with the lemon and the garlic. And this garlic is very mellow, so I'm gonna Add some more. Why do you put soap in the food? Soap? Yeah. You don't. No, you literally put soap on your hand and then wash it. I need to clean up my mess. All right, so there's my, my oil. It's creamy. Yeah, it's because we mixed it up good. You already did that much cooking. Ahead and empty these green beans and the onions into this colander. Okay, let's do this. Green beans and onions. Okay, okay nobody's talking. Green beans and onions. <laughs> oh, 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 green beans and onions. <laughs> green beans and onions. Are cool. You are silly. Okay, you want another job? Yeah. Okay, see all these green beans? Yeah. I want you to pull your stool over here and I want you to pop the ends off like this. You pop. Don't, don't pop a lot off because we'll lose it, but just those very, those ends, especially where the stem is, just pop those off. Pop. Would you like to use scissors or you just want to do your fingers? Pop. With my scissors. You want scissors? Carefully with the scissors. 
cut the very end off, okay? Just a little bit. All right, let me get you a different colander to put them in once they're cut. Here, I want you to hold the scissors like this instead. You'll have more control over it, okay? That's good, you already cut it. And then you can break them in half. You don't have to break them in half. You don't have to break them in half, I'll do that. That one already did the ends off. Okay, all those, thank you. Okay, now I'm gonna slice up these onions, put them in this pan on medium heat. We're just gonna saute these down. Uh, we don't really have enough time for them to like fully caramelize. These are sweet onions. So even just well sauteed, it's gonna bring out a lot of flavor. And then I'm gonna put those green beans in with these and throw some salt and maybe garlic and herbs on it. Okay guys, here's the finished product. Uh, the green beans and onions here. I uh, sauteed for those for a little while, threw some water in it and covered it so the green beans would steam a little more thoroughly. Potatoes, nice and crispy. And here, the... Lemon, lemon chicken. <laughs> delicious chicken. Threw some lemons in here, so there's this really good pan juice. Y'all listen to this. Can you hear that crackle? So good. Sounds like... So we're gonna cut this and you drizzle the oil over it or dip it in, as well as usually we spoon up some of the pan juices and put it over there. And that, my friends, is dinner, which we are about to eat. Thank you guys for harvesting and cooking dinner with us tonight. You wanna say it? We bless you until next time. <laughs> we bless you until next time.